Hello, everybody. Welcome back to B Tech Philosophers. I want to say episode 44. It is episode 44. Look at that, man. I feel very confident now I got the timings right. Well, me, your host, Michael Odawale, co host, Elliot Still, have a very special guest in the building today. Now, we always say that, but I mean special, special. We have comedian, actor, writer, improv artist, former Tower of London liver. Tom Horton in the, the building. On, the Honourable Tom Horton. The Honourable Tom Horton. A round of applause to Tom Horton, man. Oh, thank you very much. Guys. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be on. Um, this has been yes. a long time coming. Our guest pulled out. Thank you yeah. for coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got that feeling it might have been that when I got the phone call this morning going, yes, busily. Um. <laughs> what, what, what? Don't do that. Don't do Mike. That's, that's very racist. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he sounds like to me. <laughs> But One day we'll nice. do an episode where you sound like a black man from the 80s. What's going on, man? <laughs> hey, yo, bro. Hey, sound hey. like the Cookie Monster. Very weird, bro. So. But yeah, man, it's fucking nice to have you on. You've been mentioned on the podcast a fair few times. So the listeners will be familiar in a nice way. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
If anyone's the rest got some is autism, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've never, we've only got three hours of him not wanking <laughs> of the 400 hours of recording. <laughs> That's a fair few hours. <laughs> but the thing is, you're right, because I think as performers and comedians, you want to have a sort of level of, uh, you know, you've got your thing going on and... Definitely when we started, it's changed now, but reality TV was looked at as a bit maybe of a cheap thing or something that a desperate thing to do. I think nowadays loads of comedians are doing it and people are doing Britain's Got Talent. Sean Walsh has obviously just come out of the jungle. Yeah. Joel, Joel Domit, that that was huge when he did that. I'm a celebrity. So I feel now it was good for me. And I think the best thing about the best thing about me doing it, I think a lot of people do reality TV and then they haven't got something to sell straight after because they're just Tracy, who's a beautician. Yeah. Whereas I had a tour straight in, so it's I can do it, and then I've got something to promote. So it actually, I think it, I think it was beneficial. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like in this age now, especially in the internet age, you know, the main thing is how do I get people's attention? How do I get my little yeah, slice yeah. of what's going on in this world? And mm -hmm. that's a great way get people uh, to see you, and then you can actually give them your art, your product. Exactly. You're actually good at. And like, but. Then I guess the question is, where do you join, draw the line? Like, would you do naked attraction? What to? Mm. No, because I feel like you'd, you'd weigh it up in terms of what is actually going to, because you're going to be on here for a few weeks, I imagine. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be a sustained people seeing your personality, yep. not your penis. And I didn't but play hard. Potentially, did, I, we, I, we don't know how long you're going to be in there for. So it might be a few, it might be there, it might be some, we don't, we don't know how long he's I in don't there. know how the series works. Okay. Yeah, I can't tell you how long I was in there for. Yeah. But um, but, you, but long enough to get my penis out several times. <laughs> okay, your penis was yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah. best of both worlds. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? So like, I feel like you weigh up what is going to give people an opportunity to see me, my personality, and then make them think, I want to see yeah. this guy tell me jokes and and that, about um, his life. Oh, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I can even tell you if I play myself or not. No, that, just, just a straight, straight. I, I want to, what I want to. How is Elliot turning into your lawyer? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's this the Jew in me. <laughs> <laughs> just naturally slip into that role. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, because cause you're in there, you're isolated from the world. You do not know what's happening. And it, it, when you were explaining it to me, it sounded like my idea of hell, like a very stressful environment. Because at least with I'm a celeb or Big Brother, you've got other people there to have human interaction with. Yeah. And with that, you didn't have that human interaction. And how, how did you deal with that? And how did you find it? Well, firstly, one thing's really bad is that it, it was straight after lockdown, right? right? So already we've had like a year of going mad and the world collapsing. And then come straight out and go, all right, do you want to be locked in a hotel room for 24 hours a day, 24 hour surveillance, mic'd up the whole time. They don't give you, they, you're not allowed to watch movies. You're not allowed to listen to music. Really? They don't tell you what the time is. You don't know what the time is. So you, like literally you're staring out of your window, just looking at the sun and just going, I think it's six. Yeah, I don't know. In fact, w when you come out, the welfare team, the first game they play with you is they go, what day do you think it is? And what time do you think it is? Really? Yeah. And I got the day, and I was out by about four hours with the time. Oh, do, when you say game, surely that's not that, a game. Yeah, 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 no, <laughs> like, the welfare team shouldn't be playing. The... They allow, they allow, they allow you to read books. Uh, you're allowed to like make a selection of books, and I, I chose 1984 oh my as my God. book. What the fuck? Which is honestly it's a terrible choice of book. I was, Oh, no. Big Brother's watching you. <laughs> when you came out, did you sort of appreciate the benefits more of solitude, silence? Do you know what I think I learned a lot about while doing it is because you are, you have to talk constantly while you're doing it. Okay. And they get you to talk about everything and it's uninterrupted and there's no one else sort of butting in. So you, you listen to the own rhythms of your own speech and you go, oh my God, I say that word all the time. Yeah. I know. Oh my God, I repeat that. Oh, why I, and so you you self analyze loads. Is that good? Mm, it's well, it's tough. I'd yeah. say maybe it's it's good in the long run to sort of maybe you can sort of just get better at talking. But, but you know, because you say that like it's not like this is you just as a person. If you say like a lot or and a lot, or, like you know, and like, and are big thing. Whenever you listen to this podcast, as well, like like really, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why, why should you necessarily edit that out of your everyday speech? You know, we're not trying to perfect being people but, just on an everyday. But not even that. I think there was a lot of times where other uh, contestants would do something and I go, oh, that's not very funny. Or this is it. And then I realized 
my only thing I was focusing on is whether something was funny. And actually, in a big scheme of a reality TV show, you just don't you don't just want to be funny. Mm. You've got to be you know sympathetic and empathetic and caring and all that. And I realized, oh no, that's the only angle I'm coming at this as. So that's quite one dimensional. It's nice that you analysed it completely like that, like the calculated psychopath you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but How I, am I coming across? No, but, no, but, it, but it is. Yeah, well, yeah. And as a comedian, you're obviously, you're wanting to be funny. And so, because there's no response either, that also just drives you mad. I No, I totally get what you mean. Like, I there was a, there's like a tragic news uh, story in the news at the minute about like three kids who fell for something like it's fucked up right like it's awful like the loss and everything in it and it's in solly hole with the yeah, 10 year old yeah, who saved them and the only died. the only a thing i can do when i'm uncomfortable is start trying to joke because i can't deal with the real emotion that that gives me mm -hmm. because the, the reality of that emotion is the sadness and the loss so i push it away grab humor and that then is the way of dealing with it but i've never actually dealt with the sadness within, because I'm always laughing at something. Right. If you know what I mean, which I again, I don't think there's a bad, that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that make that's quite why I do the sense of the style of comedy that I do. But that self-analyzing of going, oh, I don't allow myself to feel particular emotions because I'm always how, going for a joke. I, I, how should one deal with sadness? Is there a correct way? How do you? I think you there are definitely. I think there are definitely better and worse ways in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're right in the way that everyone deals with stuff in their own way. Mm -hmm. And um, humor, I mean, that's why we're all, like, humor is a really powerful tool of getting over tragedy. But I have certainly found um, when I've started now just trying to process and sit in sadness a bit more, or not even sadness, but anxiety or whatever, it, you can become friends with those emotions rather than just push, <laughs> pushing them down mm. the whole time. But it's hard, like, you know, I've, I've, you know, lots of my relationships have always said to me, it's tough because you always just make a joke out of everything. Yeah. And that's... And the women love that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah, funny. yeah. So funny. Right. And then suddenly, yeah. Uh, uh, till their dad's got it. stage four. <laughs> 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 you should do like a couple's counselling with you, take philosophers. So <laughs> I'd fucking love that. We're thinking of things to do is what, bring a couple in here and we try to fix their relationship. Harry and Megan, just get oh them as a guest. Maybe the best guests you could possibly have. <laughs> Look, how does your how does your dad react to Harry and Megan? Oh, yeah, to, just to explain, your dad is oh, uh, God, Lord... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sir Nicholas Horton, uh, uh, Big Nicky. Yeah, Big Nick. Big Nicky, I just, uh, the I, title I, I give Dickie, him. Big Nicky, the Big D. I, I do sometimes find Harry and Meghan quite annoying. I just want to, I feel they like, are, yeah. even when they're making a good point, just the way that they make it sometimes, I'm like, ah, you kind of shut up though, guys. No, I agree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I completely agree. Now, I get it, you want privacy. That's why you sign a 100 million pound. Well, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That, that, I mean, I think that's the go-to everyone's gone for is like, oh yeah, you left for privacy and now you've sold this massive Netflix documentary. And I don't know if you've seen online, but people are ripping them apart. I think with it, it it's that thing of there's the mixture of people who seem to have this weird hard on for them, like your Piers Morgans and people who blame them for the destruction of the royal family, but Prince Andrew gets a slide. Uh, and, but you yeah. get that within anything now, I think, where life is so polarised and you have to remind yourself Twitter discourse is not real discourse. Mm -hmm. You say that, did you see uh, Elon Musk went on stage at a Dave Chappelle that. concert and, and boo. boo. So you could have been, everyone was like, is that phone going off? Is right? Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, Elon Musk, I really hate him on the internet. I think no, it's, it's actually that one is actually accurate to we don't, we Yeah, but you, they're talking about punching up. Yeah. 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 Elon Musk, the, the uh. straight white billionaire yeah autistic yeah but well, we got enough That's of those true. in comedy we don't need any more fucking <laughs> any more people doing jokes like let that sink in there's enough autistic people stepping on stage you know what and bringing their twitter brand of humor into the real realm what no was, offense what was <laughs> black you're, 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 autism with you're space un, you know undiagnosed <laughs> mistaken for regression i've taken those personality tests i'm an eps e, 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 we, right? i want i want us uh, to do that as an episode one day where we both you're sit here in, you're an eps you sound like an e eye uh, test <laughs> af I'm fucking something we're gonna fight, do bro. the autism test on here one day that's we're gonna expensive bro and we'll do it online We'll find oh, an online yeah. one and we'll do an autism online and find out if you're autistic. And but you the state, two, the state you of the way two. you dress, I'm going to guess yes. Listen, you fucking, you've worn this same shirt every day because it's a comfort worn shirt. Same, what do you mean it's a comfort? You, wear, nice... you wear the same Bratz hoodie. I don't wear the same Bratz hoodie. I just watched for, this one. For 42 out of 44 episodes. No, I haven't. This is my... 
You so walk in on an is, argument. Is, 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 is this how the co- the podcast always goes, guys? Because I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want the couples counselling? Right, hold it, hold each other's hands and just let's say ten things why we love each other, shall we? Like, How uncomfortable like he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Mike look more uncomfortable then than no. having to hold your hands no. and give you a compliment. Human. Yeah, I haven't seen Mike that uncomfortable since, some, since broccoli touched his right. <laughs> 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 This is what we. This is we're friends. We talk shit. Um, but let's talk Harry. Mm-hmm. Harry and Meghan a little bit. Um, so well, your your dad has obviously got royal connections. Well, I, I sort of sympathise with Harry in a I mean, in a really minimal way because his mum died. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> well, the thing. Well, <laughs> murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she didn't die. She. No, she died. Yeah, she died. Okay. Yeah. Um, but forever in our hearts. Yes. Um, but. I think growing up, I sort of had, because my dad being the, the level he got to in the military, so he was the head of the entire armed forces, wow. living in the Tower of London, I had a lot of times where I felt like I was restricted by my dad's career and couldn't do certain things. And, and like I felt that, and mm. it's nowhere near the level of someone like Prince Harry. And but so he, he's quite dumb, though. Like he failed all of his exams and stuff. So like, yeah. Well, how did you do? No, I did distinctly average. <laughs> <laughs> I did a stand-up master's degree. In oh my two, god! Two. You had to pay like nine grand a year to learn what a fucking gag was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I and I got a two too. So I am officially <laughs> average at comedy. <laughs> Failed at stand-up. You, yeah. you were limited. To, that was you being limited. To, yeah. I think, yeah. Anyway, but like, so you sympathise with Harry a little bit. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I do because like, you know, all that sort of growing up and him dressing as a Nazi and all that sort of stuff is like, obviously that's wrong to do it's quite funny but yeah i mean you know that the intention there was not actually intended i think it's prob- funny until you realize like that's probably like the actual regalia like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not just like yeah. a prop yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah the official he just yeah. found it in his granddad's <laughs> wardrobe yeah his granddad was a was a nazi well his uh great granddad was a nazi great un- yeah great uncle was it was a nazi sympathizer the reason that queen elizabeth was in charge she wasn't meant to be in charge but was is it King Edward who was her dad? Uh, came in because his brother, who was the king, was like fucking love Hitler. Mm. Like I love Hitler, and then the war happened, and everyone was like, "We can't have our king." <laughs> I, I, I think I remember that episode of The Crown. It's not, the, it's, not, it's not the episode of The Crown. It's genuinely no, 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 it did, no, it did happen. No, no, but it's in The Crown. Right, right, yeah, but can... most of my royal family knowledge is actually just based on watching The Crown. I swear he abdicated because he got, like, married a woman. No, yeah, he no, ran up. Um, <laughs> no, he, he was just like, I love what this Hitler guy's up to. Let's hear him out. Let's let's do you know what? Keep keep cracking on, son. Yeah. And then we went to war with him. Was that the real reason? Yeah. And that's why Queen, queen Elizabeth well, was never meant both. to be queen. He then also did fall in love with an American woman and run away. So but he was doing that as well. Harry and the similarities and oh look at that. Mm. But then like that's the thing though, you know, you, you, your mum's been killed and extensive media coverage on her mm-hmm. and on you and now you're old enough you get married and you see the same extensive media coverage and you're just going to be fucked up you're going to be paranoid I yeah, don't, I don't I imagine think, there's so therapy in the royal family no I think he was uh, definitely vulnerable and I just I don't know there's something about Megan who just so much of the, the idea that she met this guy and then they went travelling for ages and then she goes and then I had no preparation when I was meeting the queen it's like what do you mean you had no at no point did you Google the bloke you're sort of sleeping in. She said you didn't know who he was when he... Oh, fuck it's off. It's just not true, is it? Fuck off. And yeah. she's not like a young 19-year-old girl. She was like a... No, that mean more Prince Andrew's kind divorced. of... Divorced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she tried first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like she probably had an idea of... She thought. She, I think she probably thought she could control more of what the experience would be. And she was like, oh, no, it's quite... Regimented and long, there, were, there was racism, you know what I mean, in terms of the language and yeah. what they were using and whatnot. Oh, definitely in the the media was absolutely ra- racist yeah. articles, and also I imagine in the backstages of Buckingham Palace, there's going to be some old school dudes who have mm. some really bad views, and you know it's yeah, it's going to go in, back. You're there's, in there's, Buckingham there's, Palace. Yeah. What you, the shit is made out of, like people we have killed from co- colonialism right. and then you want to go stay there and sleep in a four bed post and all of this stuff and you're going yeah, to be surprised when someone's like uh, exactly but do i think that the queen was like chasing her out the pool i don't know <laughs> I, I, I don't know that was happening do you know what's funny <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're going to need this uh, the pool 
retitled. <laughs> why? Why? No, 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 you know, it's just retitling. But, madam, the, the, the titles have been there since since we've won this back from Oliver Cromwell. What can we... <laughs> no, <laughs> something just needs to be... Like, but they, they... Did you see that guy who came out uh, when the Queen, uh, like a few months back, was like, you know, uh, the Queen... She was a fan of, uh, you know, she, she was very aware of social issues. She was very interested in Black Lives Matter and things like this. And you're like, get the fuck out of it. The only time she was interested was when the Black Lives Matter march was near her house. And she was like, why, why is all the help? <laughs> why, why have they escaped? <laughs> like, you think the staff in Buckingham Palace are black? <laughs> <laughs> You, think had, you know yeah. they've had to do some diversity thing, and they're yeah. like, you can tell they're just fuming. Yeah. <laughs> they're fuming. Even swans, the whitest <laughs> bird possible. That's all they're having. That's all they're having. No, but Chris Rock had this joke. I saw him at the O2. He had this joke about, um, you know how he said that there's a white family member who was asking how dark's the baby gonna be. Mm. You know who also asked that? Black people. We want to know in oh, mixed race. I heard that, but like. That's a natural question to ask. You want to know? If you were, if like, I had this with my family, um, and now... This, oh, Jesus, this sounds, where's this podcast which, this, sound, this sounds like a deleted scene from oh. Get Out. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, but, no, I was chatting, I was chatting strap, and, and they're going... strap ourselves in. <laughs> if you are an all, like, white, all one colour family, yeah. and then you get someone who is not of that colour into the family, I think it is a really natural question to go, oh, I wonder what... Shade's gonna come out. The fact that I mean, how is she what? expected to know? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 but you see, you see how, like you said, I can see my curiosity. Right, either side would ask that question. You know what's happening? Mike's made a slight point, <laughs> slightly on side, and Tom's fucking ran with it. No, no, like, no, no. Why can't I say the n word about my cousin? <laughs> but they've got it in all the rap tunes. So why? No, but I get you. like the fucked up thing is like she wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. No, nobody would. Uh, no, you don't get. I'm sure they didn't. Get a tulip colour chart. I just start going going right. I think we're going. I think about African Sunrise Three. I reckon. Also, she's like, why am I doing this? Why am I saying this as I'm about to be a reality TV star? And then suddenly, well, I reckon. They're not going to have to go back far to cancel you. Just two weeks. Also, like, let's let's. Megan's skin colour is very. You know, light, lightly peppering. Hey, you, of, you said of, it not of, of black. So you know what color the baby is going to be? Is what it turned out to be white. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> baby's right. Gonna... <laughs> you know what I mean? Really funny. If the baby came out like black, <laughs> <laughs> Harry went was like, "What?" what? She just said to me like, like "No, that happens." It skips a generation. It skips, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he'll turn ginger when he's fifteen. <laughs> and she's like, "Look." You didn't know your real fucking father either, okay? <laughs> oh, just, uh, <laughs> you got more in common with this kid than if it was yours. Who's Harry's father? Frank Sinatra. B- what? I heard that. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Harry's dad be Frank Sinatra. Why Harry's would... real dad is Frank Sinatra. Why no. would his dad be Frank Sinatra? Sorry, that's that's um, Woody Allen's kid. My bad. I mixed it up. I mixed, I mixed it up. I mixed it up. I mixed oh, up. yeah, it's easy to, it's confuse, easy done. to confuse the royal family <laughs> with Jewish comedian Woody Allen. <laughs> yeah, his, his kids are Frank Sinatra's kid, potentially. But, uh, I think I think it's quite obvious that Harry is Charles and Diana's son. Like, he looks like Charles. He's not even, what, even in that bloke. Uh, Brigadier. Yeah, him, do, him. do you think he's actually... You've he's got, a, you've he's got to say that, though. You know him. He's definitely Charles. Look at him. He's got the bloody ears and the bald. Like, he's a fucking completely different hair colour. Out of nowhere. No. Hair colour? What's that got to do with Quite a lot. They're both redheads. No, they're not. Is um is Brigadier is Brigadier it's what James Hewitt, right? James Hewitt, that's James the one. Hewitt. I got Allegedly. P- I got a picture of Allegedly. In let's, minute, let's have a look right. at a picture of James Hewitt. Allegedly. Are you both um single parent, single kids? I'm not a single parent. Uh <laughs> Uh, or a single kid. Oh, I've got younger fuck sister. it. Get, get fucked. Look at that. Well, that actually doesn't look great. <laughs> 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 to be honest. But, they, but, they, they, but they've deliberately done photos where they're so... They're both... No, because no. Harry and James no, are both signed on. You can on. see... Ch- yeah, exactly. Th- exactly. So we've got to wait till the coin comes out. And exactly. Let's <laughs> um, see. Like this one, face no, on the there. eyes. He's got the child's eyes close together. He's got that nose. He's Charles's son. Do you know what I've just realised? He is. The royal family are quite a trashy family. They've got like, a lot of drama going on in there. Yeah, man. They're, they're just the UK Kardashians. I guess they are, you know. Just lots of bare, bare drama. you seen that sex scene of Meghan Markle in her suits? I have not. Can we get that up, please? <laughs> yeah, let's have a let's have a watch of our, 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 our one of our future I'm queens. Not for much in the name of uh, she's getting, she's getting railed in suits. 
I mean, I'm just like it's. It's like a daytime TV drama. It's not a daytime TV it's drama. Bad, what daytime no. TV drama the princesses get railed in? What, what episode of Casualty? Are you sure <laughs> this is the real Suits? This is Suits. This might be the porn version. It's not a porn version. Skin suits. It's, it's, it's one of the end suits. Like suits, <laughs> suits would be like a 15 though, weren't it? Or maybe it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, is, it's, it, is it even that? It was on at night. It was on in, on in Dave. You know, do you remember when Dave used to like just get random shows? Do you remember Dave once had a David Hay boxing match? I did not know that. Yeah, one time, uh, Dave bought uh, rights for a boxing match. Here we go. There she is. Yep. There she is. I'm going to say what I always used to say. Uh, this used to be a philosophy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, was philo- this is philosophical. There we go. That's our... Do you know what? I'd leave my family behind for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd leave behind. <laughs> <laughs> if it was up to them, he'd probably be inbreeding with some <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, It's that, or it's one of your cousins. Hello, Harry! <laughs> like, do, you know, do you know what yeah. annoys me, though? Because now Teeth Harry. sticking out a lip. <laughs> Harry, Harry makes his money, does like conferences on unconscious bias in America mm. and whatnot. Because I feel like in America, they love that angle. Like, oh, Britain, so racist. Come tell us about how now you're in the post racial wonderland mm-hmm. of America. And we'll hear about bad those guys are compared to us. I feel like is that true? Like uh, you make, you get, he's, do he's you? done a couple conferences about like because he's talked about it in the doc as well. Like because um, in my head, America's a much more racially charged place than yeah, the yeah. UK. But in t- well, it depends. Like I haven't been out there in a while. But in terms of, I don't know if you can compare them. Who's worse? <laughs> so, like you were taking notes every time you went out there on the racial. So don't you just say, that like, say that like you're with a, like, with you're with a, with a monocle and yeah. a mustache. What do you mean? Wait, when did you last go? How old were you? I was like. Like ten years ago. All right, so you were about right. seventeen, yeah. and you were taking notes on there, oh, yeah, <laughs> writing your your thesis. On oh, I, thought, I thought I thought you went once every year or something. <laughs> yeah. Right, so little ha- Did you go l- to little, little mini Mike is he- walking around. <laughs> yeah, he's walking around the Pirates of the Caribbean. Going, yeah. these guys have got some very backward views. <laughs> Sorry, my my points on discrimination is so funny. To you. <laughs> uh, there, there it is, and then we. Now, we, now we've got to back off. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, mate. But fair enough. This is yeah, all, right. we, this you is should all... we take the knee? <laughs> yeah, 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 I would love to hear about this. Your circle's about to be a dot at the end of this. Hey, Tom, I thought you were in this show. Why is it? <laughs> they do. You know, like in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, they have Sir not appearing in this movie. And then Tom pops up on the circle. Sir, not in this. Tom, he's not in this series. In memoriam at the end. <laughs> Can't wait to see Ivor Graham replace you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but no, I feel like if you... yeah, look how much we're having fun though, <laughs> and that actually it's all good humour, <laughs> and no one means it. <laughs> it's just all a laugh because we're comedians joking. Yes, yes, yes. It's all good fun. It's all good fun. But, uh, <laughs> like, um... Tom, do you want a beer? Like, <laughs> now all comes out. Yeah. No, no. I feel like like if you try and like because Harry goes over there, and it does feel a little bit like oh, so you just realise now that you know the royal family and. Britain is is racist sort of thing, but then at the same time, like I guess sometimes you don't know, you know when you know, and then maybe you got to do something about it. Mm-hmm. But it does feel a little bit, I don't want to say disingenuous, but a bit like, well, let's it's, get this, it's coming, let's it's get this money, let's it's get com- this cash. Yeah, it's coming from yeah, the wrong yeah. person, and it's and it's it's a thing where we're listening. My thing is, is like <laughs> that we were talking about this the other week when that old uh, old what's her face, who was like a royal advisor did the where are you really from thing. Mm. And it creates this divide where it's like, it feels like if I'm white and I've got to, I've got to have, I've got to wait to hear like an opinion on it to have an opinion almost, if that makes sense. Because I, I, could, I could get in trouble if I give my opinion. Or, do, you, do you know what I mean on certain things? Yeah. Because like I, because the problem is if some people do come out who are white, that you sometimes as a white person, you don't take into account you you go like uh, you do sometimes you know have a racial but you do have a bias because you don't take into account there are people out there who are genuinely fucking racist who will just go against Meghan Markle because they didn't like that there was a black person in the royal family 
and that's the mm-hmm. same. But when you do, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that, that, okay, that's what I would say. Like, because you do have genuinely racist, but there there are different levels. Mm. You know, because you have got the bottom of the pyramid and you got the top half of the pyramid. You know, the actual which my people built. <laughs> Yes, we know yeah. all about pyramids. The original slaves. The original. And we're gonna milk that. The, we're the, gonna milk that. The OG slaves <laughs> the, the that real, no one talks about. The, the real, the, the real slaves. Yeah. <laughs> because you know the racism where it's like, oh, you fucking. Da, 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 da. That's mm. not often. Yes. So that because it, yeah. it starts from you know the bottom. Cause I remember after a lot of the, the the sexual assault stuff going on, I saw they showing the pyramid of like. The actual cat calling and stuff mm. that might be the top level, and obviously violence and whatnot. Mm. Uh-huh. But a lot of it's that there's bottom level stuff that needs to be checked too. And I feel like it's the same with a lot of different issues. So it all got you, the the moment you say, "Oh, that's genuine sexism," or "That's genuine racism," it kind of it all has to be within the lines of mm-hmm. we have to deal with all of it. What what is it though? Like on the sliding, like is there a thing? I guess where. From what I've observed, there's sort of like things where people go, I that person's a racist, that's this, and they just sort of accept that that person is that. Mm. Or like everyone does that, where you're like, oh, that person is that. Like I know people who have genuinely quite homophobic views. <laughs> Like, That's Jim. He rapes people. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what do you mean? No, but I mean, like, <laughs> I, mean like, I know, I know it's guys. Like pyramid, yeah. I know dudes who are like, oh, gay people. No one's born gay. Mm. You become gay because you're raised by a single mum. That's like. Mm-hmm. Half right. my Uber drivers. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to say it. Who it is? <laughs> who has that? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But like, there's sometimes people have that opinion. That gay people uh, exist because of like the feminization of men. Mm-hmm. Where you know, and I'm like, well, no, gay people exist because some people are gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you go, all right, that's homophobic. But on the level of homophobia, it's not throwing bricks at a gay co- so where do you yeah. step in and go uh, you can kind of go look uh, do they uh, do they have the right to hold that opinion do you see what i'm saying like wh- where do you have to step in and go hold on i think you're wrong and i think what you're saying is actually quite harmful and where do you where do you step in on that when it comes to any of those things yeah but like sometimes like i said it is an uber driver and it's just like, I'm just trying to get to Dolst in it. Like, I don't... You know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to change it. And he wrote by a guy wearing leopard print in his London, <laughs> innit? He's like, let me tell you something, yeah? Let me tell you something. <laughs> just put your earbuds in slowly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, mate. Do, do you ever do that when you just agree with a cab driver for a peace of mind? Yeah. You're like, but you say cab drivers. You just, sometimes family members say the wildest shit, mm. you know? And then mm-hmm. I've had family members say wildest racist, you know, homophobic stuff. And it's just like... I don't, I'm not going to change your mind in it. So mm-hmm. I, I kind of, maybe I'm bad in terms, I actually want to hear out what, because I just, Oh, like, well, definitely, like, the, the, I remember, I met the Proud Boys one. The, yeah, the Proud Boys. Yeah. yeah the, and I was with my, my ex. <laughs> you were doing one of your solo shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were the entire audience. That was their, that, that's a corporate. That, 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 was, that was their Christmas outing, you guys see me. <laughs> corporate. <laughs> but, so I was with uh, Craig Hill, <clears throat> who is the most flamboyantly gay man yes. ever. Yes. Yeah. And um, my ex ex, Kirsty. And it was on the boat show, and they'd been in the thing. And they'd just been to see. Um, I think they've been to a top. So they Rock. let Proud Boys in, but not me because no, so, I wore no, a so, fucking tracksuit. <laughs> Are we joking? Standard stuff. <laughs> they were dressed very nicely, actually. Um, lots of Fred Perry. Yeah, oh yeah, but <laughs> and um, Stone Island. They, no, they'd just been to the, to the free Tommy Robinson thing. So it was a few oh years ago, God. and um, they were chatting to me, Craig, and Kirsty, and they would not pay attention to Craig or Kirsty. Yeah, I bet. Really? They, they, they were really like just slight shoulder away from them. Uh, and no, was, but they but, loved you. But to me, but the thing is, because I went, okay, so go on, talk to me about what you're actually about. And then they did. There, there was one clearly one who was a bit more switched on than the other ones who were a bit more just sort of grunts. And we were talking about um, not be, not apologizing for your country's history, but then also them saying they're really proud of their history. And I was going, well, do you see how you can't um, sort of not accept the problems of your past if you're also saying you're proud of your past. Yes. You can't do both those things. And he was like, yeah, no, oh, yeah, no, I actually do see that. But I swear, it's because I went, okay, tell me exactly what he was thinking. And I gave him the time of day. Yeah. And I think so much of these views come from people and because they feel like they're not being listened to, Mm -hmm. it just gets magnified and magnified. And I think, like you were saying, 
if you just actually hear them out, yeah, you bec- you find a common ground so much quicker than you actually think. Because for me, it's like it's like because so much of it is online discourse, or like you hear about the online discourse, and it's like people become caricatures. So for me, it's just a pure curiosity of like, mm. I want to hear you out. Mm. I'm not even, even going to interrupt you or challenge you. I just kind of, I want to hear for myself yeah. what makes sense here or what mm-hmm. I can try and understand where you're coming from here so I can decide like, oh, this person, mm-hmm. like, oh, they're making sense. Not, not mm. that I'm trying to well, understand. Well, you can see like, where, you know where the emotion's coming from. Yeah, exactly. And so often, if you just let someone talk and then you don't know, answer them or try and shoot them down, they'll contradict themselves or they'll catch themselves and go, oh, no, I don't really mean like that. And then they'll, you can see people changing their minds as they're talking. So how do I know to discredit you properly if I don't actually hear out where exactly you're coming from? Yeah. I need to be able, in my own head, to decide for myself, oh, this is bullshit, once I hear out what you're saying. But also the idea that if you're chatting with someone like that, the idea of you're trying to like slam them down is not going to work. Yeah. The idea is you're trying to come to a mutual understanding and then you are you you can actually... And most times, because they're expecting the slam, they kind of got that thing. Yeah, they got, yeah. thrown off guard. Yeah, because also, I was having this thing, so many guys as well. You know how like women have like resting bitch face? Mm. I, so, like, men have like consistent twat voice. Mm. And there's lots of guys who just, they sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I was, you really, too. Happy. I was really happy just listening to the podcast there. I was thinking, like, do you know what? I was thinking, <laughs> no, Elliot, these you... guys are having such an interesting, insightful conversation. But you, you know, fucking, what the fuck was that for? You got got me voice, man. <laughs> Don't tell me that you have like a re- you, your voice is the, um, a version of a resting bitch face. My, it's, it's just it just sounds my like voice oh. get, my voice gets me in trouble. Yeah, exactly. It gets me in trouble a lot. Yes, yeah, so because like, so, in my head I say this: I'm still a fat little emo kid who's scared. But I don't realise I'm a yeah. big dashing six foot one, two hundred pound. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not, he's not a kid anymore. Two hundred pounds. <laughs> Barbarian, <laughs> just you know, Barbarian. alpha you know male. Goes. You've got protect the statue voice. You know what I mean. I do have protect. I, I, I have a. I have. I come. Yeah, I true. come. We're rousing them, but not our own. The fact that this isn't Stella is absolutely <laughs> incredible. I come. All I'm saying is, right, you come over on a dinghy. I don't even have to do a voice. You yeah, come you over on a dinghy. You, you weren't doing a voice. You were just shouting. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't you doing it. <laughs> you were just talking more loudly. Yeah, you've, got, you've got LBC caller voice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to Nick Ferrari, not yeah. a James O'Brien. I don't call him for James. I don't want that smoke. <laughs> you don't want to be challenged. What? <laughs> I call in for Nick to listen to me. <laughs> No, but so yeah, so I, I, that's why it's, it's, it's important to hear people out, and also just sometimes it's just entertaining to just hear a point of view that I don't. Instead of having a house the weather conversation, somebody yeah. telling me one of their conspiracy <laughs> theories. Like, oh, this is genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are you really up to? Let me tell you now, Satan, <laughs> Satan controls the music industry. Oh, have you? Yeah. Heard, have you? Have you, do you got, are you guys aware of the Satanic Panic? No. Nah. No. So the, there's a. Um, if you really wanted to hear about one about explain, there's a very good episode of Behind the Bastards with someone I want to get on this podcast called Jake Hanrahan, who's a journalist. And uh, so there's a conspiracy theory quite big on the internet at the moment. A few people uh, I know in comedy believe it, like that the music industry is con- that the, the Illuminati does deals with Satan in exchange for fame. Right, that's the conspiracy theory that people you see who are famous. That's why there's a lot of demonic gesturing. Like they go, look, they do this symbolism and stuff. Mm. And it's called the Satanic Panic. Do they explain how to like how to like summon him? No, because that that would require <laughs> Logic some music, logical. Yeah. It's a lot easier to live in the world where the music industry is probably like because people do this in comedy as well. People say things like the comedy industry, and you're like, what do you mean by that? Because right now in this room, this is the comedy industry. Like uh, the same way it? someone runs a gig uh, in Soho, that's the comedy industry. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no Mister Industry. No, it's, it's ridiculous, and and, the, and with a certain like there's loads of stuff online now with the sort of Andrew Tates and all this sort of stuff who are all talking about the Matrix is doing mm-hmm. this and they're out to get. You and it's a war out there. And you go, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what this this sort of bigger, overarching what, power? Well, that's where it's th- not true. Is it, so, I mean, I would say my dad got to a pretty high level. My dad, your dad can summon Satan. My dad's done Bilderberg speeches. Oh, your dad has who killed Diana two, in his phone. Two, <laughs> two, two Christmas ago, we had wine tasting uh, with the Rothschilds uh, <laughs> uh, on, 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 on a webcam. Why are am you on I... our podcast? <laughs> How right. has your life ended up? <laughs> no, I'm questioning why as well. But I'm here. Like, I love you, but like sometimes, Tom, I'm like, I don't believe you're a real person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. 
What, what, what's the beef with the Rothschilds? Why do people hate them? Uh, They're just some it, billionaires. It's, it? it's, um, well. it's believed you can date it back to... Is it anti-Semitism? JP- yeah. <laughs> yes and no. The, it goes back to there was a deal like that. So basically, there's no. Uh, if you used to look at an old American dollar, I believe it's before a certain time, it would say it, it was uh, the the value of gold. We use money as an exchange for gold, essentially. Yeah. The gold standards got changed. So money is now just a belief system. We don't exchange in gold, we exchange in the belief that money works, that money has value. It's value. Yeah, yeah. true. That deal was made years ago by a lot of bankers, the Rothschilds, your JP Morgans, and your all of this stuff. Back when they were actual people, Mr. JP. Yeah, Morgan. yeah, yeah. Back when there was, then, yeah, back when they were like the dude, right? As Vittorio would say, the guy. And <laughs> they, they, yeah, they did this deal. And that, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's genuinely true. true. Mm-hmm. There is no gold behind currency. There's a lot of things in banking that my natural granddad would have been involved in. Loads of those sorts of things. I think people it, then jump with it. And I've done, I used to be a big conspiracy theorist. They jump with it. The thing with conspiracies is there's actually a lot of safety in it because you take something like Sandy Hook, right? That event is completely... I'm going to land, land the plane. You're I'm going to land the plane. Oh God, in, that was in, a hell in, of a slice. No, no, no. no. I'm going to land the plane into the Twin Towers <laughs> <laughs> and then tell you, tell you who did it. <laughs> it was it's really, been really nice having yeah. me on this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Playing Sandy Hook, the Bermuda so, so Triangle right now. So, right? Like, like, so like you see like conspiracy theorists, like, someone came, like Alex Jones came out and said Sandy Hook was done by the American government to because then the American government can clamp down on gun, gun laws and the whole reason that we have we have guns is to stop the government getting tyrannical. So by doing this, they're able to take away your guns so the people can't rise up. That's the conspiracy behind it. You live in a safer world if that's true because that means someone is organizing something. Someone is in charge. If what is actually happened, what I believe happened is a lone lunatic, people are insane. They're not given medical care that they need for their mental health issues, but they also have access to firearms every now and then, are going to walk into a place and massacre people and cause levels of tragedy. And the chaos of that is random. There is no reason for it. There is no rhyme. This is the fucking brutal reality of the world and the position we are in now. That is more terrifying than some Jews somewhere sat there and went, oh, how can we do this and do that? Because that gives you a level of safety. Someone's in charge. Someone's in control of it. Also, it gives you a level of uh, sort of anger and somewhere to sort of place it. I think, as I was just going back to what mm. I was saying, my dad said, the, the higher up the, the, the ladder he climbed, the, the more and more he realized that there's no, there's no big secrets. There's no volcano with a bunch of blokes and a bald guy. Yeah. It's, it's just people trying to get to the top and then going, right, well, the fuck do I do? And then trying to look after themselves and all that. The idea, like, conspiracy theories are mainly boiled up by people who, um, the lives are quite boring. <laughs> and they yeah. just haven't got any that. And they just, they need, they need something to be more exciting. But sometimes every now and then, there'll be some colluding. Most of the time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me land the plane. Let me land the plane. Who's 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 flying the plane? That's who's the word. But no, but like most of the times, it's like the collusions do like taxes and stuff. You know. Well, that, that's the Panama Papers. Mm. That didn't go nowhere. Yeah, should have gone somewhere. Well, that's the thing. It's like it's it's like people are looking at this satanic pa- that Satan runs this. And uh, if you ring the fucking hotel reception of certain places, you can order children to it and that. And you're like, no, like the real thing is the Panama Papers. So what or the thing that- is, that, like the Pan- that's annoying because that's something because it was boring. Oh, look at these files and these this money. Everyone's like, ah. but also that's where the real conspiracy <laughs> is: is that the the papers are owned. It's like there's this deal. It's no secret <clears throat> that the conservatives have meetings with the Daily Mail. I know they have these de- de- meetings with Daily Mail. I know several journalists. Oh yeah, Who- and there's, there's going to be. People in high power who are helping their mates out and doing this and that, and they that, all go oh, to school with of, each other. Of course, that will happen. But I'm talking about get back to but, Elliot. But the idea that this. the royal family are lizards, or like the world's flat, or that the moon landings never happen, is just like, come on, like. But you told me an interesting thing because you we went, planted the dinosaur yeah. bones to throw everyone off the scent. Yeah. It, well, that, that's the thing. It was that, again that goes back to the, it was Satan did it for the Satan. Like there's like, oh, did, you went to private school. Yes. You went to a boarding school. I did too I did. for a little bit. Did you? Private school. For a visit or actually? No, no, I was there for year seven and eight. 
That's the most Whoa. condescending thing you've ever said. Uh, I was going to let you make a really good point and redeem yourself that I know you have, but we're just going to end with what appears to be one of the worst things that I have that's ever that, seen. That sounds great, Mike. That sounds great. Did I you genuinely... <laughs> this has been, Lucas has been in enjoy? here for two hours and hasn't enjoyed once. <laughs> Usually he has a lot of fun on our podcast. <laughs> No, I no, what were you doing? I went, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was the gardener. <laughs> You're a gardener. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> some, some pocket money on the weekend. <laughs> 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 I was like Matt Damon in that movie. He's yeah, yeah. maths on the, on the board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like, why is it everything with Drew Graffiti? Why, why is everything in eight? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Why is everything in eight? <laughs> oh, it's my It's a drug reference. God. It's a drug reference. I know. Yet. That was oh, good. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, every, one of our uh, best guests, uh, right. This has been one of the best guests. <laughs> I a no, go on. So you went to no. So, <laughs> no on, talk, talk me for your time then. <laughs> no, I was just saying I went as well. So, I actually had no you, point. Is that it? I had no point. Oh. Not like you actually give a fuck. <laughs> I do. <laughs> what, was what, what was the point you were gonna make? Finish off. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I can't say that. Well, my 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 <laughs> point can't. my point was gonna be. <laughs> before, before fucking you kip here. <laughs> like we, we no, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, no, I, 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 I wouldn't put. It's not. It's not Tom, a racial we're thing. Fucking, it's we're, I know we're class. fucking. We're fucking. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the podcast. You almost blend in too well. That's a, <laughs> really got a vibe here. It's an excellent dining table it? you've got with holes in it. And uh... um, so what I was going to say is, you were, at the board school you went, you told me about these meetups you'd have where they would literally drive you a couple of hours to an all scale, all girls board in school and make them have like a dance and stuff, and they'd meet suitors and stuff. And like so for the future, it was like your stock breeds with this stock. Like you don't meet the other stock. Yeah, we all had tags. No, 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 no. I think you've you've, you've You've made that sound. That sounds weird. Really weird, but it, yeah, school socials. But yeah, it was an all boys. It was an all boys school, and then every like other Saturday after rugby, essentially it's a reward in a way. We get in a bus, drive two hours across the fells to the neighbouring girls' school, get shoved in a sports hall, and then you'd sort of for three hours, and for two hours and forty minutes, you'd stand on either side of the sports hall, staring at each other, and then the last twenty minutes was just a. A session of the most aggressive fingering you've ever seen. Some hanky fingering panky. Uh, lots of hanky panky. That's interesting. All right. So I wasn't at. The, what, what what did I get wrong? Well, what, what, there were suitors, <laughs> and we were told to breed with the other stock. Well, that's, no, that's, that's not that's quite the right. Subtext of it, isn't it? Sort of the subtext. That, that's the there. subtext. Is like you mix. Yeah, I guess with, it, I guess it is. I guess it is. Your, and it and it's it's a thing where like you sort of look at like the reason the country's in the state it's in, is because it is ran by people who have no who. You, you've stepped out of that, oh, and, yeah. of and, and, and we weren't allowed to socialise with. Um, so, yeah, and we and to be fair, we weren't allowed to socialise with anyone from the town because they were working class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so yeah. We, we were, we were. Do you think? Do you think? I mean, I'm going to ask this question. I'd be interested to see what your answer is. Do you think you've carried that viewpoint into things you do now? Maybe podcasts you've come on. Not <laughs> I'm socialising with you right now. Tom, Tom is very. Uh, Man of the people, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You carry I, your, I, I, not, not, not the people, not our people, not our <laughs> but he carries Tiki his. Um, carry uh, I'm joking. He carries his privilege well. I would say he doesn't uh, shove it in your it, face. No, he no. lightly sense it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess like, but Tom is just. It's like, it's like a glade that goes off every yeah. thirty minutes. I'm sure there's there's people who've had the exact same upbringing as you, and they've turned out to be terrible human beings. But you, you yeah, no, I've, I I know a lot of terrible people. No, well, um, yeah. <laughs> you everyone should know a few terrible people in their phone. Who do, who do you know who's terrible? But like, but I think I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my people, I feel like if I needed to like get rid of a hooker, I, I feel like you guys would be one of you two. <laughs> So what kind yeah, of bleach yeah. is it? What kind of bleach? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. First things first. Just to give you a real fake name. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. very important. Right. It, no, I'd go. All right, Michael. 
I'm going to call you back from a payphone in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, you're, I'm going to call you number seven. You're going to refer to me only as Big Johnny Bong, Big Johnny Bong. Big Johnny Bong. Thanks for saying out loud for the fence to the cipher later. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what? They just played the transcript in court and I'm like, oh, okay. why the fuck did you call me? Why did you think I was a good idea? You know Tom. <laughs> I actually wanted to get on to a philosophical dilemma of the week because that's yeah. actually what we do here. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this, the, is this the, the final wrap up? The final wrap up. Mm-hmm. Final wrap up. We have, a, we have a philosopher of the week or our moral dilemma of the week. Uh, so did you guys hear about the prisoner exchange uh, over in America mm. with yeah. the NBA star Brittany Griner? No, I haven't heard this. So she's like the number one, you know, like LeBron James. Mm-hmm. She's like the LeBron James of, uh, of women's basketball. Yeah. But she's kind of considered to be like the top of the top. Amazing. Okay. Right? Yeah. She was in Russia and she had some CBD oil uh, this year. Right. Arrested her, obviously, with the whole mm. Ukraine situation. And like, you're locked up for 20 years. You're, you're oh, d- done. You're out. And then so everyone was saying, well, that's not fair. We need to get her out. So Biden, there's a trade deal uh, over with her with a Russian's arm dealer, Victor Bout, also called the Merchant of Death, convicted illegal arms dealer. And a lot of people are asking. So sorry, they're 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 exchanging weapons for. No, they're they're they, exchanging the merchant of death. The man himself is oh, a, I see, a right. top dealer. If your Ooh. dad probably oh, has right, heard I see. of this guy, Victor Bell. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> your dad sent him a congratulations. <laughs> <text>. Speed dial. <laughs> He's on our Christmas list. <laughs> your dad's writing welcome <laughs> home. <laughs> fresh out, fresh <laughs> out. <laughs> your dad turned up with a bottle of Kavasi on the, on the FaceTime. <laughs> oh, my boy's back. We're about to make some money. <laughs> So this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Tom's dad's there picking him up. Like, My brother! Do you that's what it's like in the military? It's like just people at a house party just going, hey, you got any numbers? <laughs> just bring up arms dealers. Yeah. It's coming around with a... But, but basically a lot of people are asking, like, how is that uh, uh, mm. a, a good trade to trade a, an ex-WNBA star for somebody who is the top of the top of arms dealing, right? Yeah. And I'm like... This is human life we're talking about. How is there? How can you value it up like that in terms of? Yeah. Oh, is an NBA star worth an arms dealer? Surely it's just like yeah. We've got I don't know, but it's up. like it's like trading Pokemon and going they're just cards. No, <laughs> Pikachu is worth more than. I think the Merchant of Death been out the game right? for so long. Do you know what I mean? So now he's like yeah. ready to get back. Yeah, in. bro. But it's kind of like it's. Uh, do you know what it's like? It's like Paul Skulls saying he's coming back to football. <laughs> and it's yeah, like right. it's like you can't. He can still ping one. Do you reckon he can, he can ping one? But he it ain't it ain't prime pool skulls. Yeah. Do, you re- do you reckon America know he's chilled out? And so Russia are gonna be like, guys, we've got the Merchant of Death. He's back on side. Then when he arrives, he's like, Namaste. Like, fuck! <laughs> fuck! Fuck! I've been doing a lot of reading in uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of reading in prison, and I'm now I'm a member yeah. of the Nation of Islam. <laughs> turns up it, turns up, it turns up in a suit bow tie. <laughs> Like, starts trying to convert Putin. My brother. <laughs> if I have some of this oil. <laughs> yeah. oh. Ukraine is in our mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's say you're leading a deal, right? Yeah. Uh, Would you think that is uh is your priority? I'ma just get out this 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 woman. All she did was take C B D oil to Russia, which is stupid because you know they're trying to get you for anything. Or were you like ah. I I did can we we want the woman? And do you still have the CBD? <laughs> <laughs> can, can we have that as well, please? <laughs> we gotta try. We gotta try and yeah, make yeah. it look like we're getting something. No, all, 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 all of that, please. <laughs> I just, I just feel like, okay, let's say that you, you were stuck in Russia. You know, you had a spliff in your, in your back pocket. They asked, they wanted to do a search, and you're like, no, fuck this shit. I ain't being searched. They to get, to get this rifle. joke, sign up to the Patreon, <laughs> and you will see the 45 minutes before this episode that is. That would have a lot of reference to. They headbutt you with a rifle. Now you're in a Russian prison. Right? Okay. And then now, so I've, I've, but I've like oh. fought back a little bit. I've taken out like nine Russians. I take it in oh. your head if you want to believe yeah. that. I've yeah. taken out a fair few Russians. So. And then now there's a deal to sort of like, oh, let's get an exchange for Elliot, right? But the person in there is like a war criminal, active war criminal. They're about it. As soon as they're released, they're getting back on Bro, the Bro, you best go fucking f- into the sea and find a summer Bin Laden. <laughs> And bring him back and reanimate him into himself and get me the fuck out of there if that's what they want. I am not spending my life in a Russian prison. I, I do not care what the government has to do. Nuke Finland. In, get out of NATO. Yeah. Get me the fuck out of there. I, I don't care if a million people have to die. 
You are getting me out of the so, Russian so, prison. So not for your country. Like, you know, I'm going to hold these 15 years. You know, <laughs> you get me the fuck out. Whatever it is that they want. If they want the codes to Trident, you best text them over to Mr. Putin <laughs> and get Elliot home by <laughs> tea time. What value? Because at least when she gets back, when this Britney, she's going to be doing some free. She's going to be doing some dunks. i fucking got some You're going to turn up to Voxel in your, in your tracksuit again. Bro, <laughs> top, top secret needs someone to close late show. <laughs> Where's Elliot? I have a service. You have value. Martin Luther had a dream. <laughs> I had a late show to close. I have my own value that I bring. I mean, to be fair, I don't know how good the Merchant of Death podcast is. Maybe his is really yeah. good. Oh, should we try to get the Merchant of Death as a guest? I'd love to have the he Merchant of Death. He must be on a media, media campaign right now. He's going to do a Netflix series like Harry and Meghan. Yeah. <laughs> but as somebody with a father. Yeah. My story. <laughs> do you think, I've always asked you this, say a nuke's heading over to the UK, all about a dead. Do you reckon there's space in the bunker, the real bunker? The, the, like we know, there's a the, secret the, conspiracy bunker. No, there's the there's the bunkers, then there's the bunker. For for, for you, do you reckon you get for in? me? Yeah, no. Well, that's do a good question. If there no. is something coming, I don't how, think my how, how long would you know before we knew? Uh, well, no, my dad's retired, so not, was, I would not. You tell me, no one said it. Not, hey, Big Nick. Up. Come on. Maybe, I don't know, Merchant of Death. Uh, Wouldn't it be funny if you didn't, he forgot to uh, he, might, <laughs> he, he just puts his feet up on the, set, on the spare seat. He's just got his, oh, uh, there's a head count. Someone's missing. We're, we're, we're in our family WhatsApp group going, why's dad not read any of the messages? And he's just there. <laughs> uh, I would have invited you all, but I wanted, I wanted to bring the dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness this has been really fun it's been a lot it's of fun great. Tom thank, thank you for coming me. in and uh, I wish you all the best of luck I, I want thank everyone you. to go watch The Circle and then come and buy tour tickets and buy tour what, tickets what's your, what's your current follower account right now because when this finishes I'm on what on on, on Instagram. TikTok Instagram uh, nearing 60 when, once okay. The Circle comes out I'm saying you're going to double I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It depends on how long you're in there for. And it also, you know, I have an idea of the narrative that I give you because reality TV isn't really reality TV. There is a narrative no. and stuff. And I know of that. And the clips that have come out recently, I'm going to be the clown. Yes, but you, I don't know. It depends how endearing you. Clown it, you going know. on a comedy tour? That makes mm. sense. Seems good. Mm. Seems good. We'll see. I think you're going to come across really well. I know you, so I know you will. Um, and if you don't, We'll delete this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do episode 44 again. But let's, uh, if you've got anything you want to promote, I mean, obviously. Well, not. yeah, no, well, I'm going on tour in January, uh, my Absolute Shambles tour. Find him on Instagram under... Uh, uh, Honourable Tom. Honorable thank Tom. you for Tom, coming on, Thomas. You. This Thanks, has been guys. B-Tech Philosophers, episode 44. There might be, sign up to the Patreon and uh, because you get to hear all the... All the backstory, all the gossip of what's gone on these last few days. Fascinating 45 minutes. Uh, fa uh, we really skipped over Mike's, one of the best achievements of anyone in comedy <laughs> I've ever seen. To talk oh, about, yeah, to well talk done, about, by the way. It was really great. Oh, to, talk it, about, to talk about what is me having an admin <laughs> booth for 45 minutes. It was, it was what? One of the most <laughs> egregious things. Like, genuinely, genuinely, absolutely not okay. An entertaining 45 yeah, yeah, minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, entertaining 15. Yeah, out of 45. Uh, rest of dragged, I'm not going to lie. But, how, uh, how, was, how was the... Oh, no, was anyway, so it's been <laughs> busy. I actually do need to go to the loo. <laughs> See you guys next week, man. I appreciate you guys. Love.